and good afternoon, everybody. Shift 2017 has been about transformation. And one of the technologies that is most closely associated with transformation is blockchain. And why is that? Well, there was a quote actually from the IBM CEO, part of her presentation at Cybos a couple of years ago, that really, for me, crystallized the potential of blockchain. And that's when she stated that blockchain would do for transactions what the internet did for communication. And it's this whole idea that we will have a set of technologies and protocols with built-in trust that will unleash a number of innovations around both business processes and transactions that capture the attention of Intel, and of course, it's capturing the attention of the industry. The interest in blockchain has actually has also been fed by some massive expectations. And in fact, if you look at uh, data from a few of, uh, of the analyst groups, like Gartner, they expect that the global derived business value from blockchain will reach something in the range of $3.1 trillion around the world. Okay, that's $3.1 trillion by 2030. And they are basing that analysis on three opportunities. The first one is business process efficiencies. The second one is their expectation that there will be market disruptions as a result of creative disruptions in the business. And last but not least, the expectation that blockchains will enable new business models. Regardless of the hype and the expectations around blockchain, and regardless of where you are in your journey with blockchain, I'm here and the rest of this presentation is going to be about one thing. And that is Intel's commitment to shorten the time to blockchain value for your business. I bet that over the last year or two years, many of you have been asked, what are we doing about blockchain? What are the implications of blockchain to our business? Or some version of that question. And if you were asked that question a year ago, you probably could have gotten away with saying, hey, it's a little bit of hype, we're not quite sure. But fast forward to 2017 and to shift 2017, and this is moving from the realm of hype into reality. And what I'd like to do is share a few examples of customers, partners, organizations who have already started down the journey of deploying blockchain to achieve that derived business value that Gartner and many other analyst firms have been talking about. First is the government of Dubai. The government of Dubai is actually committed to becoming the world's first govern government to move all of their transactions to blockchain, and they have a very aggressive target, 2020. That's just, what, two and a half years from now, right? Walmart, earlier today we talked about food safety. I thought that was a great example to build on. Walmart has been working and looking across their supply ch chain from farm to shelf to understand and have visibility into the provenance of products, including produce. That process on today's technology takes about six days. They did a pilot on one of my favorite fruit, mangoes, and they were able to shorten the time to have that visibility from farm to shelf down to two minutes. So when you think about the 3.1 trillion, sounds like a big number. When you think about the first opportunity there around business process optimization, you are already seeing examples, pretty significant factors of improvements. Again, six days to two minutes. In the healthcare segment, lots of opportunities in healthcare, both around the addre addressing the issue with fraud through automation and also the processing of claims, a process that usually takes 90 minutes, 90, sorry, 90 days, we can probably get that down to a matter of minutes. And we're starting to see that, and that's what's informing our collaboration with Pocketdot and a few others in the healthcare segment. In addition to healthcare, we have some examples in the energy segment. And actually, across the East River in Brooklyn, neighbors in Park Slope are already selling electricity 
or energy credits to one another. And they're doing this through a platform that exists today called Transactive Grid. So you can start to see that these, the usages of blockchain are really becoming real. And of course, we're here in New York, and I don't mean to stereotype New York, but there's a lot of money here flowing in financial services. So we are going to give you a live example with one of our great partners of the work we're doing in financial services. But before I do that, I want to share the focus of Intel from a technology development point of view when it comes to blockchain. In order to deploy blockchains, you are going to have to come overcome a number of different challenges, technical, regulatory, understanding of business processes. But from a technical point of view, we've decided to hone in on three areas, privacy, security, and scalability. Let me talk about each one of them for a second. Privacy. One of the biggest challenges that companies face is they want to transact with one another, but a lot of their data, maybe their algorithms, they don't want to expose that in the traditional blockchain model. So what we've built into our silicon are privacy-aware, trusted execution environments where you can bring your data, you can compute on that data without that data being exposed to other parties. In the area of security, our previous speaker mentioned smart contracts. The whole concept that you're going to be able to create a programmatic instantiation of a business process. You want to make sure that those smart contracts are secure. In blockchain, there's also the concept of oracles, which are sources of data into your blockchain. You want to make sure you're able to trust those sources of data. And you want to make sure that your blockchain is running on a known, trusted environment. So security will be an important part of this. You also want to make sure that whoever is authorizing and accepting transactions into the blockchain is whom you expect that individual, that entity, that process to be. Now, that brings me to scalability. Why scalability? It's because in the process of making your blockchain privacy aware and making them secure, you may or may not end up having to trade off for performance. And Intel doesn't want to leave you wanting for performance. We're going to give you as much performance as you can get. And this is an important element of our collaboration with many in the industry to ensure that if you're going to deploy blockchain, if that's the right solution for your business, it operates at the speed of your business. OK? These are big challenges to solve. We continue to work on them every single day. Our commitment here, again, is to shorten the time to value, to blockchain value for your business. And I want to have somebody who's been working very closely with us share an example of what a collaboration with Intel looks like and what are the possibilities that blockchain is going to unleash. So with that, I'd like to introduce Charlie Cooper, the managing director of R3. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much, How are you? Good, thanks. Rick, thanks for the introduction. Uh, thank you all for coming today, and, and thanks for Intel for hosting us. So my name is Charlie Cooper. I'm a managing director at a company called R3. Uh, we are, at its core, an enterprise software company that is building di distributed ledger and blockchain solutions for the financial services industry. But unlike many of the companies that are out there doing that, we're not doing it in isolation. And what I mean by that is that not only are we a software company, but we decided at the beginning of, uh, in the beginning of the days for us to launch as a consortium of global financial partners from all over the world, as well as regulators, trade associations, uh, standards bodies, and others, so that rather than building a product and hoping that we were getting it right, we knew from the outset, based on the feedback that we were getting from our consortium members, that we were building something that would be fit for purpose. And for all the promise of distributed ledger and blockchain technology, the reality is adapting that technology and finding the best of it and leaving behind the worst of it for financial services required a pretty significant overhaul. And what that meant was, in working with our partners, building a platform we call Corda. Corda is a distributed ledger technology that takes the best attributes of blockchain, we call it blockchain-inspired, and makes a series of tweaks to the technology that allows it to be deployed at scale 
to meet the needs of heavily regulated financial institutions operating in highly complex markets. One of the key attributes of Corda um, in, in many ways is made, part, uh, is made possible by our work with Intel are the privacy and the security attributes. One of the things Rick talked about just before I got on the stage were privacy, security, and scalability. The problem with traditional blockchain technologies in an open broadcast system is that everybody on the network gets to see everything else on the network. Or even if they, they layer on some level of cryptology, cryptology to protect that information, the privacy of those transactions can neither be guaranteed or if they are, the problem with scalability that comes with that is, is massive and makes the technology too slow to work in a real live environment for, for our clients. So using SGX technology developed by Intel in our partnership, we were able to deploy Corda using that technology in a way that solves those privacy and security problems for our, our clients. Now, Corda is in the marketplace. Our 1.0 version was open source last month and our enterprise version will be live in the next couple of months. But I wanted to close with, for a minute with a real question, which is, well, what the hell are you gonna do with it? Because the reality is there's so much discussion around blockchain and all of its promise. What sometimes gets left out of the equation is what's the problem you're trying to solve? And one of the things that's really critical in working with banks is they have a significant set of problems. They work in a highly regulated industry. They're working on legacy systems in certain areas of, of banking and custody banking and trade finance and others. They're still using fax machines. They're using hard copies of paper. I'm not exaggerating. That's true. So we're helping them solve real problems with the deployment of our software. So a couple of j just quick examples. Trade finance. Uh, for those of you that have ever worked in the trade finance industry, it is not an exaggeration that the, the way in which global trade is handled from a financial standpoint still requires bills of lading and hard copies in certain countries and actual stamps and signature from real people. The, the time and the intensity and the risk that goes into those operational problems is dramatically solved by distributed ledger technology, moving all the trade finance lifecycle onto ledger. The second thing is digital cash. Now that sounds obvious. But in order to fully realize the attributes and, and the impact of distributed ledger technology and financial services, you need to be able to issue, represent, transfer, and store value of, of cash on the blockchain so that you're able to move that around from buyers and sellers into a in, in a transaction. So that when that value is transferred, you can guarantee with something called settlement finality that you know what you have done with another party has been settled and that risk is gone. And the third thing is the digitization of actual assets. An example we have is a company that's, that's launching an application on top of our software called HQLAX, High Quality Liquid Assets. And what they do is digitize high quality liquid assets at buyers and sellers. And when you have a bank that has more than they need and they have another financial partner that has less than they need, they're able to transfer that in near real time in a system that normally takes days or weeks to allow those parties to utilize it in a very real way. And that product's coming to market early next year. So those are three very real examples of what we're doing and we're doing in partnership with Intel. Um, again, Rick, I'd like to thank you and all of your colleagues, Mike Reed uh, out in California and the others who've been such great partners with us. Uh, and we look forward to continue working together. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thanks again, Charlie. Great example of a collaboration with Intel and you've noticed the common focus around these problems with privacy, scalability, and security at the heart of what we're trying to solve for. And then, of course, you have to bring your business process know-how and innovation to leverage those technology uh, investments that we're making. So I want to talk a little bit more about what Intel is doing in the blockchain space and our collaborations here. First, let me talk about the technology for a second. What is it that we're bringing into the blockchain space? From a silicon point of view, Charlie mentioned a technology called Software Guard Extensions, SGX as well as the unscalable technologies, processors that we've talked about most of the day. We bring an understanding of the different elements of the blockchain, and we're putting our focus in a number of different areas, in particular around the concept of consensus, which is how do you decide to add blocks into the blockchain, and we're trying to make that as energy efficient as possible. And all of this work, by the way, it's informed by the fact that we are building our own distributed ledger technology, which is really helping, in addition to collaborations like the one with R3, 
inform our roadmap for the future with blockchain as a critical workload. In addition to the work that we're doing on the technology development side, we have a number of different collaborations. And one of the most important to us is our participation in standard bodies and with academia. We're a founding member of Hyperledger. We're also a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And we have a number of joint research papers and real development work with academia. And that's really important because this space is evolving rapidly. And we want to make sure that as we are partnering with you and as we are one of your key technology partners, we are on the edge, on the leading edge of developments in this area. And there's three that I want to highlight because they're very important. Um, I mentioned smart contracts. I think the, the, one of the previous speakers also talked about smart contracts. And again, it's the concept of creating a digital instance of a business process that is actually alive, that is engaged, that is actually working for you on your behalf. And we want to continue to do work to ensure that those smart contracts are executed in a secure fashion. The second area is about programmability. There's lots of different work going on on what programming model, what programming language you want to use to then derive the value from the blockchain. We continue to do work. We want to give all of you as much flexibility in terms of programming language and programming models for blockchain. And last but not least is our continuous focus on enabling energy efficient and scalable deployment of blockchains based on the number of nodes, the size of your network, the number of partners that you want to bring into your blockchains. We want to give you the ability to manage the privacy, the scalability, and the security to fit your needs, to fit your requirements. Last but not least, of course, is our collaboration with a number of different players in the industry. And if, you're being, if you've been watching the blockchain space, uh, since the middle of August, as I was telling a few folks last night, I think we've had X number of weeks of consecutive announcements around blockchain uh, technologies and the use of software guard extension, including three or four uh, this week. While we're here, the rest of my colleagues are at Money 2020 announcing uh, partnerships and solutions development in blockchain with the partners that you see up on the screen. Okay? So, where do we go from here? What's next? I love Charlie's comment. One of the things he stated is that first and foremost, before you start working with the technology, or maybe while you're working with the technology, it's important for you to understand what business problem you're trying to solve. Okay, that's absolutely fundamental. So first, you want to do that reflection on how these types of technologies enable your business. Second, you want to learn. And there's lots to learn in this space, everything from different distributed ledger technologies to different consensus algorithms to different programming models for blockchain. There's quite a bit to learn. So I recommend you get those technical folks while, you're, while you figure out your business process, right, your line of business folks, get the technology starting to understand what they actually can do with the technology because that's going to be important. You'll soon figure this piece up. You want to make sure that you're ready to deploy the technology. And like I said before, there's lots to learn. And finally, engage. We're ready to help you. As I stated earlier, we have a very strong commitment to shortening the time to blockchain value for your business. There are many other partners here, many other partners you saw on the screen, many players in the industry that we're collaborating with to ensure that you're going to get the highest level of return from your investment in blockchain and blockchain-related technologies.